Let's analyze this high-level college singles point, and let's see what you can learn and apply to your own singles game. Now, this video is courtesy of Jay Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I put their link in the description below. All right, a lot to unpack here, a lot to learn. I'm excited for this analysis. The first thing, let's look at the server and his technique on his serve. Pretty good. I mean, there's a lot missing here when it comes to being able to get racket speed. Uh, but let's first look at the toss. As you know, I'm a big fan of toss timing. So it's very simple. You just put the ball at the top of the head on film, and then you put a timer down and you want your toss timing to be between 0.6 and 0.9 seconds. That's how long it takes for the ball to go from the top of your head until contact. And you can see right there, he is below 0.9 seconds, so he's good. So the toss is not too high. This is great. One thing that he's really lacking the server here is coiling. Um, if we look at his elbow, his hitting elbow, his hitting elbow should be going way back here. You want your body to coil and you want to feel like you're elbowing someone. In fact, let me show you his serve versus JJ Wolf. Now, to be fair, JJ is a pro and, you know, national champ. Um, so I, I'm not saying that the guy on the left here is supposed to have, you know, as good a serve, but I'm just trying to help him out if he happens to watch this video. Let's look at JJ's right elbow, right? So the, the number one power source on the serve is bringing the elbow forward and up. So the elbow making this move, and you can see his elbow making that move. So you want as far a distance for that elbow to travel as possible. And so as JJ brings his racket up, he also points his elbow back behind him. It's kind of called elbow the enemy, right? Uh, Vic Braden came up with that 50 years ago. So when this player on the left here, when he's bringing his racket up, look where his elbow is pointing. His elbow is pointing down. Let me actually make that a different color since... <laughs> His shirt is red. So his elbow is pointing down. So if somebody's standing behind him, he would never elbow someone. So this is one area where I would actually want to help this student, this player, if he were my student, and say, look, you've got to coil more. You've got to feel like you're elbowing. We can see JJ's chest. Here we can actually see this guy's back. We can see a lot of his back. I mean, his JJ is pointing his chest, you know, toward the back fence, where this player is actually pointing his chest forward still. Uh, so there's very little coiling, which means there's going to be very little uncoiling on this serve. Now, one thing I do like a lot is this position right here. See how the elbow is above the hand? This is something you see with Felix Auger Aliassime's incredible flexibility that you should be driving up with the elbow. You know, what makes this circular swing, and that's the path the racket's going to take, you can see the racket draw that circle. What makes that circular swing to give you racket speed is the elbow driving forward and up. That's the number one power source on the serve. So the fact that this player, even without elbowing the enemy, has this position right here where the elbow is higher than the hand. And you also see this with Taylor Fritz. And most pros, they do this. Uh, but Felix is just unbelievable, the, the flexibility. It's a really great testament to this player's, uh, you know, tennis acumen and his knowledge and his ability and athleticism that he knows to get into this position. So this is awesome. I would just recommend that he elbows someone behind him first and coils his body a lot more. And he would pick up easy three, four, five miles an hour extra on his serve. If we look at the opponent and we look at the split step, remember, you know, from watching my videos that the proper timing on the split step is to be in the air as your opponent hits and land the split step after. And you can see that. He, uh, watch the opponent's feet. Watch how he jumps up into the air right there as the ball is being struck. And then there's the ball, the uh, split step being landed. So the reason for this is because you want to synchronize your brain and your reaction time with when your feet hit the ground. And there's about a 0.2 second delay in our reaction time when it comes to something visual. So all we have to do is go to the contact, which will be right about there. And then we throw down a timer and we see how long it takes until his feet hit the ground. I'm willing to bet it's going to be about 0.2 seconds. So let's see. And there are his feet hitting the ground. And that's actually when you start to see his racket move around the 0.2 second time or uh, second mark is when his racket starts to move. Again, that's his brain processing what he is seeing so and what the eyes are able to see. So 
You want to be in the air as the opponent hits and land after they hit in order to react fast. Because when he lands, he kind of wants to have a, a trampoline effect to explode in the direction he needs to to return this. Now, I absolutely love this block that the returner has. Notice he doesn't chop. He just holds his racket up. That's incredible. Most players would chop in this situation um, and put way too much backspin on this ball. But he really just holds it very firm, as you can see, which is really great. Now, really cool here. Watch the server. After the server hits, watch him make this little move to the left. See that little move? It's, it's very slight, but little details make a difference. He moves forward and then moves left a little bit. Watch. He goes in and then he's moving left. So he actually ends up on the left side of the court slightly. That's because he's trying to hit more forehands, right? That's his, that serve plus one idea. You're trying to hit a big serve and then couple it with a forehand. So if this player were left-handed, he would not have gone left right there. If he were left-handed, he would have served and then stayed in this area because he wants to hit more forehands on his left side. So that's a nice little difference you'll see between righties and lefties. Now, here is where things get interesting. First, one of the things that you have to know about playing a ball that's at head level is balls that are played at head level need to be played farther away from the body. And I would say that the player in red simply does not stand far enough away from this ball. And then he's a little jammed. I'm not saying that because his elbow is bent and many of you, oh, oh, wrong tool. There we go. I, uh, many of you may have just noticed that his elbow was bent. I'm not a fan of telling everyone that they have to have their arms straight at contact because that's simply not the case. Uh, a lot of players on the pro tour have their arms bent at contact. Um, but I just feel like he's too close to this ball and it really hurts his ability to do much with this ball and, and what he wants to. Now he ends up blasting this ball and approaching. Now I'm willing to bet many of you said, Hey, he shouldn't have been going forward. Well, most of your recreational opponents don't hit great approach shots either. So this is actually a very nice representation of what you need to do in this situation. I thought it was cool in slow motion to see the returner guess this direction. And he actually, he's guessing because it's kind of like a penalty kick in soccer or, or football, proper football, um, uh, where the keeper will actually guess which way, just because the balls are often hit so hard and so close to the lines that you have to guess. Uh, and he guesses and he guesses correctly. You can see him moving to his left before the ball is ever hit and he guesses correctly. Now the player in red approaches the net. Let's look at his split step timing. He should be in the air and split step after. The opponent hits, and he does. So the player in red, there's the hit, and there's the split step. In fact, we can do the timer again. There's contact. Let's see how long it takes for him to split step. And there's landing right there. And look what we got here, 0.21. So you can see that they are synchronizing their feet, hitting the ground with when their brain reacts. Now, when you are this player and you have an opponent attacking you and coming forward, it's really important that you hit the ball low to them. And all you have to do is just aim right to them and low over the net. Super simple. Don't feel like you have to go for a pass, which can be riskier or worse, a lob, which is really risky um, from way behind the baseline. It's so difficult to get the ball to go over their head and then land just in front of the baseline. It's so much easier to use what's called a two shot passing shot strategy where you hit the first shot at the feet and then you have the next shot where you can go for the pass. Now, I want you to notice the player wearing the black shirt. He hits the ball to the opponent's feet, but watch what he does. Watch how he immediately starts running forward because he knows that he gave the, uh, the approacher, the person with the red shirt, a half volley. So the ball is going to hit the ground, hit the racket, and pop up. Right, So because of that, he knows to go moving in because it's most likely going to be a weak ball. Now, remember that guessing idea where you're going to guess left or right. Well, the player in red is guessing because the guy in the, in the black shirt, he's going to hit this ball. And if he waits here, most likely he's not going to be able to react. He guesses to his left and then he's able to quick reach over and get the ball over the net. Now, here's what I want you to take away from this. And this is really important in doubles when you're poaching. When you make a move, stay in the ready position. What we're not going to see is the player in red move his racket to the left, which I'm so happy he doesn't. Watch how he moves to the left, but he stays facing forward. He moves to the left while facing his opponent. Just in case the ball comes this way, he can reach his racket over, which is exactly what happens. He moves to his left, but he's still, because he kept his racket in front of him, he's still able to reach over and get the ball 
over the net. Now, in this scenario, the player in red is like, ah, what the heck? I'm going to lose this point. So he doesn't even try to get in the way of this ball. But I do want to show you one last thing with the player in black. And that is, notice he's making sure to contact this ball above net level. When you have a ball close to the net, that as it bounces up, you need to hit the ball at the peak or near the peak. You want to make sure that you play the ball above net level. That way you don't allow it to drop and then you have to lift the ball up over the net again. So if you can get to the ball while it's above net level, then you'll be able to drive it. I guess one last idea. Notice where the player in black makes this ball bounce. He makes it bounce in the center of the court. He is not going to risk missing anywhere near a sideline or missing long. He's going to hit the ball where there is tons of room for error, and he easily wins the point off that shot. Now, if you love strategy as much as I do, then you've got to pick up a copy of the Singles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Over 50 pages of strategy after strategy to help you play your best tennis. And the strategies are broken down in two really cool ways. First, they're broken down in the type of opponents you play against. Pushers, counter punchers, aggressive baseliners, serve and volleyers, Dr. Feelgood, those are people who put a lot of spin on the ball, all court players and lefties. And then the strategies are broken down into the five phases of a singles point. Serving, returning, rallying, when you're going to the net and when your opponent comes to the net. It's awesome. Each strategy is laid out in diagram form and it also has a QR code. Hold up your phone or tablet, up over the QR code and up on your device pops a five minute video of Will Hamilton showing you exactly how to use that strategy. Just use my link to get it in the description. I'm also gonna pin it in the first comment. Now, if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, or if you wanna find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment for Play Your Court. And it's playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. The reason I make videos like this is to encourage you to go out and film yourself and diagram your own match play. See, if you're watching a lot of my Two Minute Tennis YouTube videos, which I really appreciate, thank you. If you're watching them and you're studying and analyzing what other players are doing, it should entice you and encourage you to film yourself and study your own game and go step by step through the, the strategies and the techniques and the footworks that you should be using based on what you're learning in this video. Now, the main takeaway that I want you to, you know, take away from this video, uh, you ever see that movie, Allow Myself to Introduce Myself, Austin Powers? All right, so when you're going forward, sorry, if your opponent's coming forward, I'm so distracted now by that. Um, You've got to, this is you, you've got to learn to hit low to your opponent's feet. It is called the two shot passing shot strategy. When your opponent comes to the net, and I know I'm gonna get people in the comments saying, but Ryan, that guy in the red shirt, he shouldn't have gone to the net. You know how many times recreational players go to the net when they shouldn't have, or they don't hit a good enough approach shot or a good enough forcing shot? That's just how tennis is, right? Boxers, sometimes they don't throw a good enough punch. Golfers sometimes don't make a good enough putt. That's just how sports, you know, are. It's like you, you simply aren't always going to hit your best shot. So we have to be able to react appropriately. When your opponent comes to the net, don't always go for the pass or the lob. Hit it low to them. Then step forward and split. They're going to hit the weak ball. Then it's so much easier to come in and go for the pass on the second shot. Please go out and film yourself playing matches and do the work it takes to raise your level of play. If you do that, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.